Y254. Imagine. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just <coughs> joining, you're on time for the first conversation of, conversation of the day on Matters Career. And today we want to talk about personal branding. What is it exactly? Does it uh, stop on the outside branding or is there more to it? And uh, who exactly is personal branding for? We'll answer all these questions because we have an expert here with us. That is uh, Nangami Masaha, who's a mentor and public speaker. Karibu sana Nangami. Thank you so much for having me back. Glad to have yes. you again. Yes. You're, you're not a guest anymore. You're part, <laughs> yeah. part of this show now. Uh, yeah, I think I'm part of the family now. You know? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, getting into it, mm -hmm. personal branding. Sure. When, uh, you know, first thing top of my mind when I hear personal branding is, you know, dress the way you want to be addressed, you know, yes. something of that sort, mm -hmm. you know, in that area. So what is it about? Um, personal branding, I think in literal terms, is just a representation of you, who you are as a person. And if you want to influence people, then you need, definitely need to have a personal brand. Mm -hmm. So personal branding is just uh, a representation, a public representation of who you are. And uh, the beautiful thing about personal branding is that it doesn't have to be separate from who you are as a person. So okay. when you're building your personal brand, then it, you have to be one and the same person. The person that you are offline and online should be the same thing. The person that you are publicly and privately should at least be similar. Mm -hmm. So personal branding basically is just who you want people to know you for or you want people to know you as. Okay, so yes. it's uh, in the area of influencing. Yes, in the in, yeah, p most of the time it's in the area of in influencing because if you're building a personal brand, it means that you're building a representation of you. You want people to know you for something. You want people to know you for who you are. Mm -hmm. You cannot be building a personal brand when you don't want to be known for something. So you want to be known as a, as the you know a top tier doctor. Or you want to be known as as the lawyer who's practically good at what they do and yeah. so you have to come off as that you have to build a brand around that it's like um, mm -hmm. you have to do some sort of PR right. so that you have to create this sometimes even some sort of illusion in the minds of people because when you're building a personal brand you want people to follow you you want people to recognize you for and sometimes it even comes from a place of, of um, you know self grandiosity where you want you to be known for the things that you're really, really, really good at. Because okay. people who are not interested in, pers in personal branding most of the time don't even want to have a personality that is public. Because a brand is something that you give to the people for them to accept it and for them to like you, love you for who you are and follow it. Either it's for the good or for the bad. Whether your publicity you want it to be, pub to be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, that brings me to the next, qu next question. So who is it for? Is it for only those people that want to be known? Or should it be for everyone? Personal branding, basically, it's for everyone because, um, of course, all of us, I believe that uh, as human beings, we want to be associated with the good. So anybody who's, anyone, anyone online has a personal brand. But there are people who have taken it a notch higher because of the agenda that they drive uh, themselves with. So, mm -hmm. for instance, we can even take a quick example if you're on social media, Facebook, Twitter. There are those people who just come on to, you know, share memes and just live out their lives, post a few pictures here and there. Those are people who are not really keen on personal branding. Mm -hmm. But the for the people who want to influence, you're an author, you want to be known for something, you're an artist, yeah. you want to be known for... Like myself, I'm a public speaker, you're a, you're a journalist. You want to have some level of following because people don't follow nobodies. People follow um, people who are others who have some sort of influence. Mm -hmm. So then you have to follow, uh, you need to have a brand. But for someone who's just okay with their 25 followers and um, the two likes that they get, those are not people who are really, really keen on building a personal brand. But mm -hmm. anybody who wants to have influence, you want to have a following, then a personal brand is, is quite important. Then the degree mm -hmm. or the extent and the nature of the brand mm -hmm. is what will define, what will determine now who's who. 
Okay. Yes. So we'll get to that uh, once we get to why it's important to have that influence All right. in that space. But And then uh, there's <coughs> something that I saw online. So if you, you should Google yourself, uh, our viewer, and then you see what comes up. Mm -hmm. And then if what comes up is... Uh, uh, okay. And then the question is, uh, does what uh, come up what you want people to... Uh, know you for, mm -hmm. and uh, if at that is a, if at all something comes up, or maybe because you can search yourself and then mm -hmm. get an old man's face there, and not so you're not even in the space. Yes. So, uh, so I, I I got that you first need to be at least in the space, and then now get something that people should know you for. Yes, because uh, personal brands depend on the audience that you want to be the people that you're building the brand for. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about build, building a brand is that you build the brand, it's like a child, you nurture it once it's grown, you release it, you set it out to the world. So the brand, once you build a brand and you're, uh, I'll give you an example, I don't know if I should name drop if that's okay, but I'll give you an example of um, somebody like Akothe, or we can even talk of, uh, of course, the legendary, mm -hmm. um, the late Catherine Kasavuli, or even Carolyn Toko. These are brands, they are big brands, yeah. but they have built a particular audience. So they are not a brand that is going to be liked by everyone but they're in a particular space so anybody who comes to that space is able to relate to that particular brand mm -hmm. so if you're if you're a spirit you're a free spirited you know you're a you're, you're you're somebody who wants to live life out large you would definitely definitely re resonate with somebody like um, Akothe if you're somebody you're a woman of a particular age or you're just a growing woman who wants to be professional and you want to be known for the things that you're doing a brand like uh, Caroline Mtoko is one that will move you is the one that you would really like to follow so she has her own audience. Akode has her own audience. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody else. Even Jalango has it, had his own audience. Those are brands. They've, and then they have released them and let them um, out into the world. So okay. once your brand then gets out there, you have almost very little control over it. Because now the perception that you have created in people's minds, that is what that is going to drive your brand. So it doesn't matter then mostly of the time, most of the time what you do, your brand and your audience mm -hmm. will always defend you even in days when you have done some nefarious acts. So for instance, um, someone mm -hmm. like, uh, I, I could still give an example of uh, someone like Akode. She has already built a brand and a personality about her. So whatever happens, mm -hmm. if, if, if uh, she's known to have done some, something that does not sit well with her audience. Her audience will go to war for her. She doesn't have to do anything. Yeah. Her audience, yes, will go to war for her because uh, of the nature of the brand. And because it has been accepted, it has become um, a child of its own and it has a life of its own. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so if you have an audience and you're operating within that audience, then building a brand that resonates with your audience, because you have to know your audience, you'll not be appealing to everyone. Mm -hmm. And like, of course, we say in the business, I am an ardent student of management. We say that uh, you have to create a niche inside of a niche. You have to have a niche inside of a niche. Mm -hmm. So you can't be appealing to everyone. You can't sell to everyone. You have to sell to a some people. Yes, audience. a particular audience. So how do you identify this audience that you want to speak to? Uh, then it, it depends with your agenda. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, everyone has an agenda. And I believe that most of the time when, you know, when people come out, uh, we, we want to be very, uh, what is the term? You want to come off as somebody who's has the interests of the world and the people and you want to do something that is uh, altruistic you want to do something that will will touch the hearts of people and so you're thinking that it's coming from a nice place but most of the time it comes from a place of insecurity it comes from a place of self selfishness mm -hmm. um, you want to be most people just want to be famous for the sake of being famous um, <laughs> yeah. if you grew in an environment where you were not seen mm -hmm. when you grow up you want to build a brand that people will see you you know, in high school, I wasn't seen, I wasn't heard. Most people didn't see the good that was in me. Most people didn't see the talent. And so I am going to build a talent that is going to blow people's minds off. Mm -hmm. That is something that is deeply embedded in people's subconscious minds. You don't you really, really know, know that it. what is driving you is selfishness. What is driving you is that act of you. It, it's coming from a place of it's just me and insecurity, a deeply seated insecurity. But of course, when it comes off to people, it's something that is uh, uh, altruistic. Okay. So if you have an agenda, what do you want to be known for? I want to be known as the person who creates some sort of positivity to the world. I want to be known as somebody who creates beautiful music. I want to be known as somebody who creates beautiful pieces of art. Mm -hmm. So once you understand that, then you can build around it. Or you're also somebody who just loves to live large. And you want people who also others who want to live large, large to follow you and to emulate you. Because at the end of the day, most of us want to be leaders and we mm -hmm. want to be leaders so that we can be followed, not because of the things that we are doing, but just the virtue of being the one that is 
at the front. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so if that is your agenda, depends on the agenda, it, it's, it's, there's no right or wrong, and that is why publicity is publicity, whether it's wrong, whether it's positive, whether it's negative, okay. it's just publicity. Right. What is your agenda? So I'll give you an example of myself. Um, I'm a public speaker. Mm -hmm. Definitely I want to be known as somebody who imparts good or impacts good to society. Mm -hmm. Much as it ca it's coming from uh, a deeply seated sort of uh, sense of insecurity because um, just standing before people and having something to say and people to listen to you, that is that, it, it gives me a high. Um, <laughs> you know yes, it gives me a high, yes. And then work. you're charging and people want to come to listen to you and after, after, after the conversation or after the interaction, they're like, oh my goodness, you were amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it feeds my ego. Much as there's money that is coming, it feeds my ego and everyone has an ego. But of course then what is presented to the public is that I want to do good. And that is what now will drive everything. So bottom line yes, is when then. you're building a brand <laughs> be honest with yourself where <laughs> this thing is coming from because most of the time as human beings we're deeply self-centered and what we decide to build our brands around mm -hmm. we, we, it comes from a sense of insecurity which is a good thing which is a good thing because as human yeah. beings and of course with the mental health thing that is going around most of us come from environments that were uh, troublesome and so growing up we want to make up for the things that you know the things that you didn't have growing yeah, up are the things that will motivate you to work and so that you can have them. Mm -hmm. So if you came from a society where you didn't have money, you're going to always be working hard to, to make get money. money. Okay. Yes, if you came from an environment where you are not seen, where you're not hard, where you're not the best, you'll always work hard in life to be the best. Mm -hmm. So when you ask yourself, if I'm working hard to be the best, what is driving you to be the best? Chances See. are, at some point in your life, Mm -hmm. you considered yourself not the best. And so you and want to satisfy mm -hmm. that insecurity. You want to prove to yourself that I'm good. Okay. Because once you have a brand, uh, you, you, you're trying to sell something. And you, when you sell something, whether it's good or bad, you always want to present it as something that can always be accepted mm -hmm. by people. All yes, right. Amazing. And now, is this brand only sold on the social platforms? Because now we're talking about followers and people, you know, all that. Is it on the social platforms or where exactly are you supposed to build this brand? Uh, the good thing is that, of course, we are in the uh, technological, yeah, technological revolution. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the fourth industrial revolution tech is is quite important uh, in technology this is where you can sell you, you can sell literally anything you can sell products you can sell services and so it's the best platform it's the best opportunity for anyone who wants to build a brand mm -hmm. to be on so social media and social media is the best place to be on because that is where you can have access to people you would never ever meet and you can never ever have access to because yeah. can you imagine if you are building a brand when you have one million followers it is highly unlikely that you're ever going to meet a million people in your life yeah it's highly unlikely but you can meet them they can congregate on your on on your social media platform, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is that you are on, they can always find you there. So okay. it's the best place to be on. And mm -hmm. then once you build that platform on social media, then you have to transfer it to your public life or to your offline life. Mm -hmm. Because the people that you interact with in daily life are not as many as the ones that you have on social media. Online. The number of friends that you have on mm -hmm. social media are nowhere commensurate to the numbers of followers that you have offline. Mm -hmm. So yeah, being on social media is apparently the best it's the best it's the easiest way to sell yourself because okay. you can have somebody who just creates some piece of content today and then it goes viral tomorrow and all of a sudden they're just tracking in the millions you're wondering uh, how did that happen I power of social media mm. so it's the best it's the best place to be on today because uh, a while back the only place or the only way to be to build a brand mm -hmm. was through advertising and for you to have an ad advertisement um, on yes. tv or on radio would take you mm -hmm. um, money and time and it, yeah. it takes longer to do that okay yes and now um how long okay before we get to even how long how exactly does one build a personal brand because we have spoken about what you want to be identified for what mm -hmm. you want people to know you for what what other things are you supposed to be uh considering while building your personal brand number one is um you have to be authentic I know this word is cliche the term is cliche it has been thrown around uh, <laughs> enough times but you have to be authentic because the you know, human beings operate on, on an energy level. Mm -hmm. I can come here and give you a cock and bull story about who I am, but the energy is off. The yeah, energy is, is just off. You, this is not true. You've not met me. You don't know anything about me, but I can tell you a story. And you're, like, oh, you're yawning yourself. You, I'm boring you to tears because 
<laughs> the energy is just off. Mm. So once you're authentic, people can can really relate. I don't know, I don't know her, but there's something about her that just intrigues me. I like her. Mm. It's because the energy, there's the merging of the energies. So if you're authentic, then it becomes easy for people to relate with you. Number one, when you're authentic. Number two, it becomes easy then to flow into your personal brand. You're not faking it. You're not trying too hard to please. You're not trying too hard to come off as somebody who's not who they are. Mm -hmm. So once you're authentic, then it becomes also easy for you to live the same life publicly and privately. Yeah, because you said when we're starting uh, personal brand comes from uh, from your own personality yes okay yes yeah, so you have to be authentic number one and then number two you have to be consistent you mm. have to be consistent with your brand. Mm -hmm. You can't... Okay, I know that human beings uh, are the most complicated. We are complex. We, uh, there's nuance to human beings. We, <laughs> no matter how, how good we want to, to say that we are, no matter how compelling our story is, at the end of the day, we are, we are incredibly biased. We are controversial. Okay. Yes, and we are flawed. So I can come here and tell you, you know, I wake up in the morning and I have a routine. I wake up at 4 a.m. and then I meditate and I work out and, mm. I, and then I read for an hour and then I, I, you know, I hit the road and I'm at work and then I, uh, nah. There are times <laughs> where I just want to wake up at 7 and I want to stay in bed the entire time and not do anything. And I can come here and say, you know, uh, human beings are supposed to be this and that and they are nice and, and this is what a proper human being should be. And then tomorrow you catch me pants down doing the exact opposite. opposite. And saying. that is, <laughs> yes, and that is why most of the time, by the way, we get so much disheartened with people that we deeply revere. Mm -hmm. Because this is someone, someone who sold you a story. This is the motivational speaker or the mm -hmm. brand or the person that you look up to. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow they are caught on camera or they are caught on TV or there's a story about them that just doesn't add up to their brand. It's out of character. Mm. Um, you, this is someone who you look up to as a pastor or somebody who really motivates you to be the best version of yourself and then tomorrow they are caught with someone's wife or someone's husband or they have side chicks. They're like, oh my goodness, but I trusted you. Yeah, so you I believed in you. Yes, we become about someone broken. you believed in. Exactly, because mm. uh, their, their brand now in that particular time is not in line with what they're doing offline. And that is why, so you have to be who you are. And the mm. beautiful thing about also building a personal brand, when you're building it, especially online, you have to show people all sides of who you are, when you're having the bad days, when you're having the good days, when you're having a, a, a moment. And it's also easy for you to relate with such people. You can imagine when someone, uh, and you, we, we know them, the personal, uh, the brands that we have seen, whenever they come and tell you, oh, but they had this moment that really, really shook me. Um, it was it was a health problem, or it was something to do with family. It was something to do with my academia. It was something mm -hmm. to do with work. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes easy to relate mm -hmm. because now they are human. You see yourself in that individual. But when you have a brand that is perfect, then there's a problem. Their hair is always up. Their makeup is always on point. They never. They in fact for the ladies they don't have outbreaks. They don't have. Acne, All they don't, perfect. they are married to the best man in the world, their mm. kids go to the best schools and they perform well and they are managing career and love life and motherhood. Mm. At some point, yes, in the beginning it's nice, in the beginning it catches your attention, in the yeah. beginning you're like, this is gold, this is what I want. This and then over time, mm. it bores you. Over time, they, they come off as perfect people they are, and you're imperfect. So you can't see yourself can't in them. Yes, mm. because they are not flawed. Okay. So we, even when building a personal brand, that is why even with the best, the best brands, they always show their other side. Mm -hmm. That today I am just not in the mood. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was facing a problem the last two months. It was a problem at home. It was something to do with health. And this is how I came off of it. Now people will relate, they're like, oh my goodness, thank you for sharing so this. So they're also human, relates. yes. Yes, they're also human. So mm. once you, you're authentic and you have, you're consistent as a human being, mm. be consistent, uh, consistent as a human being. That is why the brands that sell are the brands that are human. Because human beings are emotional and we attach ourselves to things that are deeply, deeply, deeply emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then be genuine. It, it's difficult to be genuine, I know. It's difficult to be genuine, but try as much as possible when you're building a brand to be genuine about who you are and the person that you are because people will catch you mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're flossing all these uh, nice things that you have and then tomorrow uh, people you catch you doing the exact out. opposite or people find out that you're struggling you don't even have a car yes all. you don't have a car <laughs> you you don't live in the neighborhood that you do you're always taking photos in other people's homes or so that kills the brand it does it does because now it, what it does is that it it, it, it uh, takes away the trust okay. that people had in you 
Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And uh, what you've said that you are supposed to show the, you know, the other side, the negative side or the bad things that also happen to you, not only the perfect picture, mm -hmm. but when do you separate um, your personal life? Because you don't want maybe everything to come out. Mm -hmm. You don't want your whole life to be known by mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. You want to have a private life. So how do you do that? It depends. Um, personal brands come off in two ways. There are people who've built personal brands around their professional lives mm -hmm. and the people who've built their brands ar around their personal lives. So you have to know which is which. So if it's your professional life yeah. and you're known as someone who, I'll, I'll go back to the example of, uh, say for instance, even Catherine Casavulli and, and uh, Carolyn Mutoko, and I want to throw this around because of course they are media personalities and most of us are mm -hmm. cognizant of the immense, beautiful, brilliant works that they have done. Mm -hmm. So if for instance, you are someone who is of that caliber, you, most of them, their private lives are that, private. So you, we know nothing about, or if, if, if anything, we know very little. Perhaps you just know their name, their kids' names, where mm -hmm. they go to school. We know nothing about their live lives. We don't even know where they live. They have separated the personal from the private. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the professional life, lives now, because it's out there in the public, even when they're having now bad moments, somebody has been fired or they are changing careers or they are switching um, jobs, then at least that is still human. Mm -hmm. You can say, oh, okay, so Caroline just came from Radio Africa and then she went on to do YouTube yes, and wow. now she's an influencer. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you can have the shift. Mm. So as, as human as it is, we see that there is a shift. She's just not this person who's been, you know, climbing the professional ladder and now she's going to be the deputy president of the Republic of yeah. Kenya. <laughs> like there's no going down. <laughs> there's no time where she's had issues because I think she has also shared her stories where she felt, okay, I need to take a different path. Yeah. Things are, are, are going digital and how do I get on this digital platform? And mm -hmm. when she shares that, I started off with two likes or two comments. Two like, followers. Yes, on two YouTube followers on YouTube. Like, uh, that's so my kind of girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she has also her low moments, but professionally. And then there are people now who have their personal lives. Uh, of course, then I'll go back to the story of Akwe. Has, her brand has been built around her personal life. And that is why even the products that she influences are products that are just centered around personal lives. You mm -hmm. know, the tissues and the, 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 the tomato mm -hmm. sauce and, and that sort of thing. So it's just built around her personal life. And that is why it's also easy for her mm -hmm. to incorporate it in her personal lives when she's having breakfast or when she's going to the washrooms and, and yada yada because her brand is around her personal life. Right. So you have to separate the two do what do you want to be known for if it's professional then keep it strictly professional if mm -hmm. it's personal then if you want to combine also if you want to have a match between the two then build it around that because for people who have built brands around their personal lives mm -hmm. once they come to bring you their professional lives you don't like, relate mm, there's a mismatch there. no it's not yeah. working yeah mm -hmm. oh if somebody who was deeply professional and then all of a sudden they start throwing their boyfriend around their girlfriend around, but i didn't follow you because of that. your boyfriend and girlfriend <laughs> i don't want to see who you're dating yeah i'm just concerned about your comedy i'm concerned about um your the, the, the tech stuff that you do stop posting because i'm not here if i want <laughs> to follow people who are having couple goals i we'll know the to people the to follow yes channels, yeah. yes so you you have to to draw the line early on and know where you stand because now it becomes dif difficult mm -hmm. and now people then switch and move from you because uh, I'm, I'm in a longer country to relate to who you are. Okay. Yes. And now, wh what is the importance of all this that we are talking about? I know you've mentioned, uh, you have alluded to it already, mm -hmm. but how powerful is having a personal brand? What can it do for someone who has one and for someone who doesn't? Oh my goodness, the, the opportunities are endless for someone who has a personal brand. Tell me because about personal, it. yes, mm -hmm. tell me, um, personal brands are, are, are things that can, it can, of course, for the, the materialistic aspects of it, it can make you tons of money okay. if, if you build a brand that has attracted a huge number of following I mean the endorsements will come in you know um, quicker than you can begin to count your money the, if you're not done counting this there's another brand that coming wants to already. yes coming mm -hmm. in yeah be, depending on what you are as a person and as a brand so of course the opportunities are endless uh, for someone that has a personal brand and for someone that doesn't mm -hmm. because then it becomes easier for num that is one two uh, two it's, it's also trust it builds trust because now um, I'll skip. I'll keep on using these examples. If Carolyn is a brand, she's a big brand, so it, I don't care what uh, brand she advertises. If I have the money, I'm buying it. 
because she said because this she is said good. it yeah she said this is good she said this skin <laughs> routine and i can i can see her father like yes that skin routine works i, I am going it. to buy, buy it mm -hmm. yes why because she has done the work she's built trust so whatever she says if if it's a phone i'm like uh, ordinarily i wouldn't buy that phone but because she has said it's it's nice i believe it's nice so she has yeah. she has already built trust and what you want in the public is trust because once you build trust then like i said you have mm -hmm. foot soldiers they go to war for you on your behalf you're sitting in your bedroom you, you go to bed at night there's a war on twitter you wake up in the morning people, <laughs> people are fighting really for you. yes there are referees there are soldiers there is casualties uh -huh. and you're not aware of it right. and you can just sit back and wait and see uh, and just watch the internet go into flames mm -hmm. and you have no part in it why because you built trust and so it becomes easy for people now to even um, believe in the strength of your character uh -huh. and then therefore they can go to war for you. That's okay. the beautiful thing about having a personal brand because nobody's attract nobody. Mm -hmm. So if you're a nobody, nobody knows you or you only have the people in your circle that know you, then you have no influence. Because at the end of the day, when you're building a personal brand, you're building it strictly for influence. Mm -hmm. You want to influence people in a particular way. You want to be known as someone who does stuff in a particular way. So yes, then so, and, and especially in this age where we have moved, at least uh, in the past, in the recent past, it was digital marketing, mm -hmm. and now we have more of influencer marketing, and mm -hmm. people are making money out of it, right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and people are making are making money out of it out just because of a brand. So we, I'll, 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 I'll give you an example of of this young lady, uh, and, I, and I keep on throwing lady names because that is what I'm really familiar with. I was with. actually <laughs> almost asking you, do we have enough men in this space? Yes, <laughs> ah, we do, we do, we do have lots and lots of them. We have men who are doing great and amazing things. If, if anything, if we just even mm. go just to branding, the big brands are, are associated with, of course, with men. But now if, if, if I go back, when you look at uh, even the story of the young girl, Aziad, mm. she built a brand around TikTok and it was about dancing that was yeah. her personal brand so if i go on on, on on any social media platform and i see her i want to see her dance i want to see her moves yeah i want to see her really being nice. yes i want to see her being bourgeois and and pressed in whatever she does and young mm -hmm. and and just vibrant because that is the personal brand that is who she's known for and therefore even the the endorsements that she will get will be centered around being fun and funky and happy mm -hmm. and so it will it will it will, it will always bring goodies um, her way because that is the the way she built her brand okay. and then uh, for someone uh, for someone else it could be different for um, crazy kenna or for flaco it will be different because of course then their demographic is different mm -hmm. for eric komodi it is different for churchill it is different for jalango it is different yeah uh, because of the audience and because of the nature of their brand okay so yes. you can be in the same space maybe comedy but mm -hmm. the people you attract are different people and, and, oh my goodness because there there is tears to life there's a strata to what we do okay. the, the, there is the bourgeoisie and then there are there are old people and there are young people and then there's also in terms of class mm -hmm. and in terms of taste just like i've said the product that Carolyn Butoko will sell is different from the product that Aziad will sell. Mm -hmm. Aziad is selling product to young people, even ladies of a particular age group. These are not women who have the financial capacity or the financial muscle to spend a pretty penny on a couple of things. Mm -hmm. But if it is Carolyn Butoko, she's attracting a 40, 35 to 45, 50 year old woman. Money. They are earning good money. They're independent. They are of a particular class they live in a particular area mm -hmm. in town and so her brand is also different and therefore it is it is almost uh, it is also an effort in futility when you go to such pages or when you go to such brands and you want them to give you content that you can relate mm -hmm. because if you can't relate to their content you are not their demographic mm -hmm. you are not their audience right. so you have to be very specific mm -hmm. about your audience and their class so if you're someone who's who's of a particular even um, you come from a particular neighborhood there are people who will love and will find chris rock entertaining and kevin hart and there are people who will just be there looking at chris you know like this thing is so local yeah and this comedy is just uh, mm, uh, exactly mm, and, and same with they want to listen to Cardi B, and then when you come you're like mm, Nadia, no, Nadia, no, 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 that's not my music. <laughs> you know, because the audience is different. Okay. The demographic is different. The test is different. different. Yes. So okay. your, your personal brand has to depend. And that is why you need to have a niche. Whom are you selling to? You can't be selling everything to everyone. Mm 
-hmm. You really have to be specific. So when you're building a personal brand, what do you want to be known for? Okay. Yeah, and who is so, your audience? Mm -hmm. So that you don't get pissed when people come to your page or people come to you and they're expecting something totally different. Because so you're like, you know my audience, this is not for you. You're in the it's not place. for you. By adios. I'm not listening to you. Yeah. I don't even have the time or the energy to respond because <laughs> you're not my audience. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that is why even when you're when you're in spaces, mm. you have you need to have the emotional intelligence to read the room. Mm -hmm. When you go to a page, read the room. What is this brand? Is it something that I re relate to? No, I don't. Is this is a feminist page? What am I doing on a feminist page trying to convince her otherwise? <laughs> no, wrong I am not her audience. Yeah. And people have already gone to these places with their minds made up. Mm -hmm. So people don't come to social media to look for, for people to convince them. People already have, they look, they have they, they, that thing called confirmation bias. You're looking for pages and things that will confirm the ideas that you already have. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a feminist, for instance, I'm going to a fe feminist page. I'm not waiting for a feminist to convince me to be a feminist. No, you're already there. Yes. If I am um, 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 the, other one, the, the other one, if I'm a misogynist, I am looking for pages that are for misogynists. Misogynists, okay. Yes. And I go there and we bash women. And I go to a feminist page and we enjoy Support bashing him. men. Mm -hmm. if, if, if that's the intention, because of course that is what is now trending today. So you can't go to such spaces. Go to, into a space, read the room. What this is not read the, read the room. This is not my my place. Mm -hmm. It is an effort in futility to even try and convince these people. Otherwise, they are going to come for me. Hiss, shake your head, move on. Okay. Because they have built built brands around that. So it it happens to everything else. Yeah. So you can't go to um, a Rolls Royce page. You can't go to a BMW page and start talking about price. <laughs> These cars are too damn expensive. They have who their own people. Yes, they have their own people. Yeah, there are okay. people who want to buy those cars. So if you are okay with the Toyota, then go to a Toyota page and hail Toyota. You know, it's convenient and it's cheap. cheap and yes, yeah. yes. And it, it's long lasting. It's easy to dispose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go there and, and do all that. Because their brand, that is what they have yeah. built around the brand mm -hmm. okay yes. so we've talked a lot about the image that you are portraying out there mm -hmm. what about the character now uh, that you have is it part of personal branding because all these others are outside what people mm -hmm. take you for but mm -hmm. what about the inside bit of it um yeah but, but 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 then again you know character especially when it comes to personal brands character mm. is um it could be could be relative depending on the kind of brand that you're building because you're trying to build an illusion you're trying to show people mm -hmm. that you know I am proper, I'm well read, I understand the constitution, and yeah. I understand life, and I understand how human beings are supposed to behave. So in, in the public domain, that is what you are known for. And sometimes it can be a bit difficult and tricky to try and live that publicly. But when it comes to character, uh, we, I, we can just be stoic about it and say that you have to also try and make sure that you live the character that you're playing publicly has to be the same that you play privately. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's a bit difficult. That's why you will meet people who have a vivacious character. These are people who are out there and they're flamboyant and they're nice and they're charming and they're warm. And when you meet them, you're like, oh my goodness, if I meet Nangami, we are going to have a blast. She seems like the, she's, she's yeah, good. She's yeah, she's the life of the party and she's nice. And then mm -hmm. you meet me in my, in my, in my cocoon <laughs> when you meet me privately. I'm incredibly shy. I, I, I love being alone. I'm alone. Mm. I don't talk to me. If you have nothing to say, I'm even an introvert. So you find people who have extrovert public personas and personally and privately, they're introverts. They're introverts. They love their alone time. They love, or, or you can even find people who are keyboard warriors, so to speak, on social media. So they always attack their dogs, their vicious. Mm. And then when you meet them in public, you're almost shy. You're scared. Like if I meet this person in private, mm. uh, they're going to tear me apart. And then you meet them they can't even harm a fly. They can't <laughs> look you in the face they can't, mm -hmm. when they are speaking. Uh, are you one and the same people? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So uh, it, it depends. But also when it comes to building a character, then you have to make sure. For the, for the people who just want to live out life the way they are, 
then when, what the, the, the people that you meet publicly and privately are just one and the same thing. So it becomes then easy to build a character around that because character is just your behavior and the way you do things and the way you live life. All right. And who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what about the place of uh, building relationships in mm -hmm. personal branding? How, how does that help? And ah, my goodness. I am glad that you have brought up the relation, relationship bit because relationships, our relationship is currency. True. Today, you can't do anything without relationships. You have to build relationships. A relationship is it's, it's, it's your access to money. It's your access to networks. It's mm -hmm. your access to opportunities. To your next job, yeah? Yes, to your next job. So you really have to know how to build relationships. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if you are trying to build a personal brand, then you have to understand the, sort of the kind of relationships that you're building. Mm -hmm. Because money is in people's pockets. So the only way to get money from somebody's pocket is by having a relationship with them. They're not just going to hand you their money mm -hmm. just like that without having a relationship with them. So you have to understand how to build relationships. And relationships deeply require emotional intelligence, something that is also becoming difficult for people to capture and to understand. So you can't come to people. I can't open a, a platform today or a social media page today and all of a sudden expect that people are going to follow me. People are not going to follow you. Who are you? Huh. What are you about? Build a relationship with me first. Let me get to know you as a person. What are you on to? What are you about? And that is why when you start a brand, you have to be authentic, speak about something consistently, and be specific about that thing that you're talking about until you build trust and you build some sort of expertise and authority. You become a, a, an authority in it. Then people begin to trust you. And then they can begin to give you their time. They can begin to give you followers. And human beings are mm. the best PR machines you can ever meet. Wow. Because all you need is access. So for instance, if I blow your mind today, you're just one person. But because I've blown your mind, you will give me access to so like perhaps even the office of the deputy president or the office of the first lady if I'm interested in, 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 in those things. Just by being one person. Why? Because I built a relationship with you. And the only way I built a relationship with you is by building trust. And it's by making you feel as though you're important. Mm -hmm. Make people feel important. Okay. Human beings are incredibly self-centered and so insecure. Mm -hmm. Human beings are insecure. Let nobody lie to you. All of us are insecure. We want to feel important. <laughs> we want to be seen. We want to be heard. And we want us to be the best abo above everyone else. Okay. And that is why even with, with the, of course, this is a youth channel. Even when people are uh, young people and you want to be everything to someone, like, I want to be your everything. Yeah. <laughs> that is how uh, human beings are. You want to be everything to everyone. To everyone. Yeah. Yeah, or to someone. I want to be everything. Am I, are you sure I'm your everything? Yes. That is how incredibly insecure human beings are. Mm -hmm. And that is also how self-centered people are. All so right. when you build a brand and when you're building relationships, once you understand the dynamics and you understand the psychology of people, mm -hmm. then it becomes easy for you now to get into their hearts. First, you get to people's hearts then you can get into their minds. Because human beings are not logical. As much as we think we are logical, we don't make decisions out of logic. It's emotions. So, okay. so once you build that relationship with someone, you have them at an emotional level. Wow, amazing. Yes. So uh, there's somewhere, okay, I think it's Caroline Motoko who said, a brand is built on a promise made and mm -hmm. a promise delivered. Yes. So what do, what do you make of that? Yeah, actually, I think that is 100% correct. Uh, you have to make a promise to people that, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do. So once you come to my page, I'll give an example of myself. Once you come to my page, mm -hmm. well, of course, mine is, is, has no ones to it. There are days where I'm just being cocky, mm -hmm. and then there are days where I am being very serious and proper yeah. and grounded. When you meet me, like, oh my goodness, this mm -hmm. lady is... You know, she understands her thing. And then there are days where I am, I'm just me and, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not as intelligent as you'd expect me to be. I'm just in my element as a human being. Mm -hmm. So once you make a promise to people that this is what you're going to get out of my brand, mm -hmm. this is the person that you're going to find, I I'm a, I'm a great artist. And when you come to my page, I'm going to humor you with the beautiful works of art that I have created. Once you, d you promise people that, and people will flock, they will come, and they will be entertained by your art or your photography, and they love them. Yeah. And now, once you promise them that, they'll say, so can you do that for me? I want photos for my wedding, for my baby shower, for whatever event, graduation. Mm -hmm. That is what I want. Can you deliver? Can you deliver on that promise that you made? Mm -hmm. People will give you work, or people will test you. Can so, you do this for me? Okay. So you deliver it. On, on what you promised them. So it, it, then, it, of course, it, it encompasses every other thing that you say. Okay. So I cannot, I cannot tell you that, oh, my goodness, I am, I am a good motivational speaker. So if you invite me to your school, if you invite me to, to your organization for me to come and speak to people, then I am going to definitely 
make sure that they are operating at an optimal level because they are supercharged and they are psyched up and they are going to give you the returns that you want because now they're going to be productive. And then on the day where you, when you bring me in, I just do a shoddy job. <laughs> right. The, the, the it doesn't work, yes, and, and people, yes, and people yeah. are the greatest PR machine. So I, I, I'll pay you, definitely, I'll pay you for your services rendered, but I'm not recommending you to anyone. No, if, any, if, if anything, like yeah, once your name comes, I'm like, <laughs> no. take that chick at your own risk. No. She's not <laughs> going not to deliver. Okay. Yes, she's not going to deliver. So you're all light and no heat. And what you want is, you know, have the heat. Mm -hmm. Bring it on. So it's important to actually... Uh, come through with the promise with that the, yes the juice has to be worth the squeeze all right yes and finally we, as we close this up there's a place of working hard uh, in this uh, you know in building your brand mm -hmm. and even being an influencer some people take it lightly you know it's a side hassle it's a side job but um you need to work on it and uh, carola as she likes likes to put it mm -hmm. work the ten thousand hours mm -hmm. so what do you say to this the place of uh, hard work ah. We, we, I cannot, I, I don't even know how to overemphasize or just tell you how important hard work is. It doesn't, there's nothing yeah. else that can beat hard work. You have to do your 10,000 hours. And I even be, I believe that 10,000 hours thing came from, you know, um, Malcolm Gladwell when you're saying, you know, you have to put in your 10,000 hours because 10,000 hours sometimes it can be commensurate to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Although at this particular point when we have the technology at hand, you can speed up the process. But you have to put in the time, you have to put in the hard yards because there's no way you can be good at whatever you want to do without putting in the time you have to be a master of your craft you can't be a master by not putting in the time and the effort because once you put in time and effort then you understand the different nuances of your craft and what you're doing such that if for instance i'll give a, an example of even myself if i'm seated here i have done time so if you woke me up at, in the middle of the night and you told me i want you to come and speak on a particular uh, to, on a particular topic i'll just wake up do my my makeup or just wake up uh, clean myself up and come to the studio and i will deliver why i've done time so it doesn't matter yes it doesn't matter what you bring to me because i have presented these topics over and, and over, over and over again such that when you ask me to talk about something i know what to say because i've done time mm -hmm. so i don't even have to go sit down and do tons and tons of research the only thing you have to do is perhaps research on this particular audience that I'm with just to know the audience that this is a young audience or this is an old audience or this is a female audience this is mm -hmm. a male audience and then just deliver on that okay. so I can't uh, begin even to underestimate the importance of hard work hard work is incredibly important you have to do your time and the only way you can be a master of your craft definitely like I mentioned is you have to put in the hard yards you 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 can't be good at anything unless you you decide to put in time. So hard work is incredibly important. And when you're building a personal brand, mm -hmm. then you have to understand that it's going to take time before you can get the following that you want, before you can get the influence or the impact that you want. You can't come online today and say that you're selling clothes and people are buying tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They don't know you. So you, you haven't built time. trust with them. I'm, I'm so sure you see these things always, all the time when you get on Instagram, somebody mm -hmm. say, I am a coach and I'm selling you a product. Dude, I don't know you. I can't who told you I'm going to go to I'm just going to get onto your master class because you said you're a coach and I have to get onto your master class. No. Make me believe that you are good at what you do so that I can get onto your master class and that has to do with time. Mm -hmm. And the and 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 failure is an option yeah. when you begin to do things. And I know that we have been told that failure is not an option. No, failure is an option when you start to do something and you have to be comfortable with failure. It's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. But in fact, you you have to be more comfortable with failure than success. Wow. Because success comes in very, I, ca I can say this, the number of mistakes we have made in life mm -hmm. is, is not anywhere equal to the successes that we've had. We make mistakes almost all, all day, every day. But one, for you to just have that one moment of success that you can say, oh, wow, this was great, this was big. Sometimes you can go through life and, and have just bits and pieces of such moments. Yeah. But failure, things will not go your way. And failure has to come from a place where you relinquish control. You have no control. You can be begin to build a personal brand today and expecting in six months you will have a following of 100,000 followers. Can Two years down the line, you're yet to do 10,000. Mm -hmm. You're not consistent. You've not put in the time. Uh -huh. You've not ensured that you attract the kind of people that you want to attract. You've not communicated your agenda and ideas as you should. And that is why hard work is important. You have to put in the time. Wow. I mean, and you have, to be, you have to be patient. Be patient to the process mm -hmm. when you're building a personal brand. But also, you have to understand that the personal brand has to be something that is easy, is easy for you. And so you have to build values first. Mm -hmm. Because people think, uh, I, I am passionate, and so I'm going to do this. Passion comes from value okay. or values. 
So if I wake up in the morning all the time and I do what I do, I'm like, I have to be disciplined. I don't need motivation. I know people now need that. Whether I'm motivated, or not I'm, whether I'm motivated or not, I'm still going to do it. So my value system is I have to do what I have to do, whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. Whether it makes sense to me, it doesn't make sense to me. Whether I am in the mood for it or not, I'm going to do it. So once I build on the discipline aspect mm -hmm. and I build on, consistent, uh, on the consistency aspect, mm -hmm. with time, because I'm doing it so well, then I become passionate okay. about it because now it's something that is coming now. It is, it is intrinsic. But there are things that we do that we are passionate about that will not take us anywhere. Okay. It will not build your brand. Because mm -hmm. I could be passionate about things that are just not accepted by this society. Okay. Yes. Oh. And you have to understand the society that you live in. We live in an African society. What you're passionate about and how you want to express yourself and mm -hmm. how you want to come off, that is something that you're deeply passionate about. But this society may not be accepting okay. of that thing. Yes. So wow. you we also also have to understand that sometimes the things that we are passionate about may not make us money. I, I, I could be passionate about playing cards. But people don't want that. It's not going to make me money. But I but if my values come from just doing some nice work that 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 feeds into the society and it's it's serving the society, mm -hmm. then I become passionate about it uh, later on. So sometimes we have to flip them around okay amazing yes. thank you very much nangami for such amazing insights you have uh, amazing wisdom in this area i'm thank sure you for me. the viewers have uh, you know taken notes and uh you know uh, will change some things All right. about their lives so maybe you can give your social handles on the camera and if you have something that you want to close with this is your camera uh, oh, my social media handles the Nangami Masaha all through. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm on every platform. The, the platform for people of my age, so Snapchat and the rest, I, I don't know what that is. I, I hear <laughs> about Snapchat, I don't know what that is. Um, but I am on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Nangami Masaha. I am not on Twitter. Twitter is too combative for me. So, yeah, I'm a coward like that. Today I have to accept that eh, uh, <laughs> I, I'm a coward when it comes to that. So, yeah, Twitter. Mark no. me absent, give me a zero. I am not there. Um, <laughs> but, but of course, my, pa my parting shot then is, if you want to build a personal brand, you have to make sure that you're authentic. It's something that gives you some sense of pleasure and fulfillment once you do it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we live in a society where we need kindness. We live in a society where we need to impact some positivity. So at least just try and make sure that your personal brand is centered ad around that. And the person that you want to be known for, the person you want to be identi identified for, is someone that who's bringing some useful insights into society and you're going to serve humanity and mankind and I think it is Muhammad Ali who said that you the rent you pay um, on this uh, no service service yes mm -hmm. is the rent you pay for your stay on earth and so you have always have to understand that you're serving a greater good that is your assignment this is the reason why you're here and your assignment is something that is bigger than you something that is bigger than your friends and family people closest to you humor this world there's a big world out there for you to humor it for you to entertain it and whatever you create just have the understanding that it will find a home in someone else's heart and they're going to accept it and once you build a personal brand understand that you at some point you'll not have control over it it is going to be accepted mm -hmm. by people and they're going to control the narrative so build a personal brand where you're sure if you leave the people to control the narrative for it because it's their baby it's a baby that you have given them to take it to take control over that is something that even when you sleep at night you sleep soundly and peacefully knowing that your brand is still affecting people in a negative or impacting lives negative uh, Wow, negatively, come on, positively, mm -hmm. scratch that, <laughs> positively, so thank mm. you. Thank you very much, uh, Nangami Masaha, yes. once again. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a better way to close this particular conversation on personal branding uh, in Career Talk. Uh, Brand Circle will be coming up next with Martin's Politics, so you want to stick right here. Talk to us at 254 channel. The hashtag to use is why in the morning. My personal handle is at Stephanie. I get to see you on the other side.